Well, hello friends, Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. And let's get, oh, we're already open for business, and the football gods are awake. My apologies, man. You know, I um, try and do quite a bit of stuff here, and uh, it was kind of interesting because I was on with... Um, west coast cowboys on his channel check him out dallas cowboy scouting um i saw tamir parker was on there and stuff and we were having some really deep 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 discussions man i mean deep discussions we were talking about des bryant we were talking about jason garrett and all the situations and stuff with the dallas cowboys and it was a great round table something i've got to get yeah uh, tamir yeah you were over there too yeah I, I don't have much coffee here so i may have to get up and go get some more and in fact i didn't get everything set up the way i normally get set up because you know well you know it is what it is but thank everybody for joining in tonight for our live stream and I got to tell you there has been so much stuff that's going on um, with the Cowboys and stuff today I, I don't know if you can feel it even though we're 121 days 23 hours 12 minutes and 20 seconds away from kickoff of the 2019 season actually I looked at the wrong clock let me say 121 hours excuse me 121 days 23 hours 11 minutes and 45 seconds away from kickoff looked at the wrong screen up there that's delayed and of course like you said Tamir didn't have all my copy the Dallas Cowboys I don't know if you've noticed this or not but oh, yeah. well, me and the Lord we got an understanding we're on a mission from God <laughs> The Dallas Cowboys seem to be trying to get the band back together. Seems like they are on a mission from God because we got DeMarcus Ware talking about, hey, I want to come in this team. I want to coach. I want to be part of it. You've got, of course, Jason Witten, who gave up being in the booth. Thank God. To come back to play for the Cowboys. You got Sean Lee, who contemplated retiring. You've got Des Bryant, who is finally back on the field and working out and trying to get back there, who wants to be a Dallas Cowboy as well. And that's one of those things that we were discussing. And man, my, my man, West Coast, you know, I'm over here on the East Coast. He pulled out the notepad, and we started having a breakdown discussion on why he should or shouldn't be back here. And I, I personally think that that, that that ship has sailed. I think that right now, you're better off not going back on that one. But, you know, we'll have that discussion for other days. But what you feel like, if you've been done with the Cowboys and you felt like the Cowboys were a bad team, you're not coming back for that. Think about Barry Sanders, who had everything to play for as far as getting the all-time cancer bro. Who's got cancer? Mark, I hope you don't have cancer. Um, I see cancer bro. I'm not sure what that is, Mark, but let me know. Um, if you do, thoughts and prayers go out to you because cancer is a mother, and it affects every single one of us, be it a friend, a uh, family member, parent, children, everybody. So thoughts and prayers on that one. But you look at Barry Sanders, who had enough of losing with the Detroit Lions, you know, and just kind of said, you know what, I'm only a couple thousand yards away. Oh, Dez is a cancer. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have to agree with you on that one. Um, but just said, enough is enough. I'm gone. I'm out of here. It's, it's just not worth it. But you see all these guys that want to be around us because they feel like something special is happening. They look at the talent that's there. They look at the attitude. And they feel like this is close. I don't know if they'll win a the Super Bowl this year. I don't. I know that this is the best assemblage of talent that we've had since the mid-90s. I know that we've got a young group of guys that are staying healthy, that are playing for each other, that are ready to rock and roll, and they want to get some. And I think that feeling is perpetrating out to all these other Cowboy players that look and say, you know, this is my last go-round. And I got to tell you, 
there's something about a person who has nothing to lose. And that's where you are with Sean Lee. Why not? Well, Johnny, I'll get to that in a minute. I, I, I will get to my reasons why not on death. There's something about a person that has nothing to lose that realizes that their own mortality is there, where they're trying to leave a mark. That that is the most dangerous person in the world. Now, somebody had left a question, and I, I just finished uploading the video so you can go back and look at it. They said, why wouldn't you bring back Des Bryant, but you bring back Sean Lee who gets injured more? And in my mind, part of the reason why Jalen Smith and Leighton Van Der Esch are as good as they are is because Sean Lee is mentoring them. Sean Lee knows more than most coaches do on the field. Sean Lee's attitude on the field is about trying to win and giving it all. And I say the same thing about Travis Frederick. Travis Frederick ended up making Joe Looney better than what he would have been without him. And that's one of the reasons why you bring back a guy like that. Because people will look at him and say, you know what? This guy has got a shredded up hamstring. And he's out there still trying to give it all. This little ache and pain that I got, and I'm 10 years younger, man, I got to get my ass out there. And Sean Lee, they've made the starting strong side linebacker. Okay, so before everybody gets bent out of shape, because when I said Sean Lee's been named a starter, Michael was like, what? Are you kidding me? I said, hold up, hold up. Strong side. He said, oh, okay. Strong side linebacker, when we're in a three linebacker set, which is only about 25% of the time, that's Sean Lee's spot. You'll see Jalen Smith and Van Der Esch, as long as they're healthy, always on the field. That you can take to the bank. So the question is about Des Bryant. There were a lot of reasons why the Cowboys let go of Des Bryant. The first thing was $16 million a year and the rest of the contract they had. The reality is when they re-signed Des Bryant in 2014, they never got the money out of it. Des Bryant constantly had injuries. 2015, even though Tony Romo was there, he was injured as well. 2016, first half of the season, he was banged up and everything else and that situation worked well because actually Des Bryant had some of the longest catches in his career the second half of that season in fact going into the playoffs had a phenomenal playoff game against Green Bay and you thought that okay this is going to take off to the next level that, that Dak and Des might be part of that triplets that we were talking about but it didn't work but the interesting thing was when you think about Dak Prescott's rookie year and when Des Bryant was coming out on the field and things and Des wasn't getting thrown the ball a lot, lot and the team was winning, Des only cared about winning. And people were asking Dak, Dak, why, why aren't you throwing the ball more to Des? It's like if Des is open, I'm throwing it to Des. And it seemed like that dynamic worked because then Des was open, Dak was throwing to him, he was catching it. 2017, things went south, and it seemed like that relationship kind of went south, too. And again, the injuries. And when you put back the thing that you cannot have, I'm sorry, and I will go to my grave with this, Tyson, you can be mad at me and all that, but you cannot be a distraction on the field and that Seattle Seahawk game when he wasn't getting the ball and he pouted on the field, pouted on the sidelines, and then when he got the ball, fumbled it. You cannot have that. And the thing about it is, social media is great for somebody like me, but it's the worst thing in the world for a football player. Because you get out there and you talk and you, you love to interact with people, and then you start going after fans and stuff and get pissed off at them and things, or you go, go ahead and you use that to have a disagreement on, it looks bad. And that's where... Things got worked between the Snake Lee, the Jason Garrett, the play calling, and things like that, that it became kind of ugly. But now understand, the Cowboys, after realizing, crap, we screwed up. We let go of him without having a plan B and having somebody else in there. They thought about bringing Dez back, and we're planning on bringing him back in to work out. 
And that was the week that Des Bryant was going through talking about, oh, yeah, I'm going to be back, you know, I'm, I'm going to be signing soon and all that. And he was out there hinting about playing. And what happened is the Cowboys said, you know what? We're good. Des hasn't changed. Des is still on social media. You can't keep a secret that we're going to bring you in to work out and you're running your mouth. So you're going to be running your mouth and things don't go right? And so I think it's just, you don't do that one. My other point was about Sean Lee being a mentor and teacher to these guys on how to play, how you act as a professional and things. Is Des Bryant the guy to teach somebody how to run the routes and how to act on the sidelines, how to be a football player? And I know I'm going to get a lot of hate and a lot of venom on that, but I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. When I look at what Odell Beckham was doing with Sterling Shepard, where Sterling Shepard started following, hey, this guy's got great numbers. You know, he is on shampoo commercials and everything else. You know, everybody loves hanging with him. And when you see him out there on the sidelines having a hissy, and then he starts doing it. He's following his example. And understand, in football, when you're young, you can out-muscle. You can out-jump other players. And that's where Dez's career has been fantastic. When Dez is healthy, you know, he's going up the jump balls. He's getting it. He's running past people. But the problem is, is Dez's body is beginning to fail him. And that's where the precise route running is and comes in. And Dez has never had that. So what is it that Dez is going to be able to teach the other guys on the team? You know, Salim, oh, God. This is one of those things that get under my skin. I'm not comparing Dez Bryant to Odell Beckham. What I'm saying is I'm using that example of what happens when a wide receiver who is getting paid, who's considered one of the top ones in the game, how he acts, how people emulate him. It's just like the guy in high school, the cool kid, you know, who's skipping class and everything else. And the chicks are digging all over him. So you look at him and say, you know what, I won't be like that guy. He's got all the chicks around. He's the cool cat. Everybody wants to be his friend. That's what I'm talking about. And that's where Sterling Shepard, a young wide receiver, is looking up at a guy who's a veteran, who's one of the top ones in the game, and trying to emulate him. That's where I'm comparing him. In the same way, and it pisses me off, because I will say the Dallas Cowboys are trying to get more New England-like. And but you can't compare the Dallas Cowboys to New England. The Dallas Cowboys aren't. I, I didn't say the Dallas Cowboys are the New England Patriots. What I said is the Cowboys are trying to do things like New England. New England, understand this. The conversation we're having right now about bringing back Des Bryant would never, ever happen in New England. It wouldn't. You know Why? They have no problem cutting somebody and moving on to the next man up. They don't hold on to players till they become worthless. They will get rid of a guy when they can get something for them. See, what the Cowboys should have technically done with DeMarcus Ware the year before they cut him is they should have tried to trade him to get a pick. That's what a New England will do. New England will take a Pro Bowl center, excuse me, Pro Bowl guard during training camp and make a trade to Miami because we can get some decent picks in there because we know we got a guy we drafted that we know can play. We can take a linebacker that wants to get paid. We can send him to Cleveland so we don't have to pay that big bill and we can get a high pick from the Cleveland Browns. We can take Trey Flowers, let him go, get a compensatory pick, and then we can sign Michael Bennett to fill in the holes. We're not going to lose that much on it, but we're going to go ahead and get another pick. So when I say the Cowboys are doing moves like New England, it's not saying that the Cowboys are New England. It's saying they are learning from that example. 
And that's what the Cowboys are doing. The Cowboys, make no mistake about it, have gone away from the old players for the most part. And they're learning that if you sign a veteran, you don't sign up for a long-term deal. You don't sign a Brandon Carr for five years, $55 million, and hope that he's going to be a shutdown corner. You go ahead and get a guy, and you bring him in on a one-year deal. That makes the onus on that guy. If he wants to be playing football next year, he's got to play well. He's got to earn that contract. And if he goes ahead and plays real well, great. You let him go. Because then in return, because he's now getting a big-ass contract elsewhere, you're getting a compensatory pick. That's why New England gets 12 draft picks last year. That's why they've already got three compensatory picks for next year's draft. They keep drafting well guys that are young, that are cheap, and they plug them in. So when that guy gets good, you let him go. You don't keep holding on to these old guys. And then you pick and choose the guys that fit your need, and you sign them to a one-year deal, and you let them walk. So this whole thing of holding on to players, we have in our mind that the Des Bryant is the Des Bryant of six years ago, but he's not. Des Bryant has not had a healthy season since 2014. What makes you think after going to New Orleans in two practices, rupturing his Achilles tendon, who he's recovering from now, and you saw him, let's take a look at that, let's see. Let's take a look here. Okay, I know it's still early, okay, but Des to me, he looks a little thick and of course being laid up with Achilles. What makes you think that he's going to be better than what we have on the team right now? And do you honestly think that Des would come in and say, you know what, I'll be a role player, I'll be back, I'll play, you know, I might not get dressed this week, I'm okay with that. Do you think that's going to happen? The other thing I worry about is the dynamic between Dez and Dak. I don't know, and, and everybody's going to say, well, you're just a Dak Prescott lover. No, I'm just saying, listen, for whatever reason, sometimes guys click. You know, everybody said Dak Prescott, he's a, he sucks a quarterback. He couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. And he worked with Dez Bryant for years. Right? In the same way, Amari Cooper worked with Derek Carr for years. And last year and a half that he was with Derek Carr, they did not do anything. Don't give me play calling, Gary. Because we had the same play calling with Dez that we did with Amari. And look at the difference between Amari and Dak versus Dez and Dak. Sometimes players just click. And the difference between Dez and Amari, Dez is not disciplined in his route running. That's not me saying that. Dez, you know, went to a route running school last year. And there's a difference of timing routes, okay? Because I am getting the ball, I'm looking over here, and I'm supposed to have you right here on this pinpoint spot, and I'm throwing to a spot. D. Will is a fake Mark Holmes account. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about on that one. Um, so that, I'm just saying. Uh, I think I'm okay. Not bringing back Des. I feel bad. I, I wish that Tony Romo and Des Bryant won a Super Bowl together. We got robbed of the catch no catch. And I wish that they had that ring. I wish that we were at the Super Bowl throwing up the X. But I'm sorry. I think the ship sailed. And, you know, people can be mad at me and everything else. Dez can kick my ass and all that. But I think 
for all parties uh, of the above, it's just better off without it. Oh, man, see, Cowboy Fan 1983, man. Dez can't catch a cold, man. That's wrong. Um, Derek Young, whoever doesn't like Dak, go find yourself another team. He's our quarterback, and we're lucky to have him. Where is Rico Gathers? Rico is still on the team. He's still on the team, so there's that. And they didn't draft another tight end, and we know that the end is near for Jason Witten, who, of course, it's, it's his birthday. Happy birthday, 37. And... It amazes me because I got this shirt at his training camp in 2007. If you guys have seen Michael Anthony, he was young back then. I mean, young. But then again, so was Jason Witten. Dez still caught it, but it's water under the bridge. You know, in the same way New Orleans got robbed. It don't matter because they still didn't get the Super Bowl come from it. So that's where we are, at least with Dez Bryant. I I've been playing in my head. And I've been waffling on it. It's like, do we bring him back? Should we? Should we not? Uh, and it's just been, you know, because I, like I said, when you saw that Instagram post, it, it, it made me feel bad inside, you know? I, I felt like, damn, Jerry Jones, the team, they let him down in the same way they let Tony Romo down. But I think in the grand scheme of things that it's better off that we just leave that as it is. Um, right now, we got a log jam at wide receivers. We have Randall Cobb, Amari Cooper, um, Michael Gallup, you know, Alan Hearns and stuff in there. It's a good, young group of guys. No Des, I love him, but no, I, I agree with you on that one. June Bug, thank you very much for the super chat there, buddy. Um, Dak Attack is going to be back in full effect this season. Well, you know, here's the thing on that, Dallas. I... I Think about this. Think about this. Let, let me see if I have my notepad here. We were 22nd in offense last year. And before Amari Cooper, who had no training camp, first eight games, Dak Prescott had about 1,700 yards. Not real good. 10 TDs, 7.2 yards per pass completion. The second half, which, which would work out, if he had played that for the whole season, it would have been 3,300 yards, 20 TDs, 8 interceptions, and 4 rushing TDs. But just bringing Amari Cooper, who had no offseason, had no training camp. Thank you, Stephanie, very much for telling everybody to smash the like button. I bet you got that from Michael Anthony Fitness, didn't you? But the second half of the season with Amari Cooper, Averaged 7.63 yards per completion. Averaged 278 yards. Had a 467-yard game and a 300-some four-touchdown pass game against the Giants. And had a 102 rating. Dick Enormous, thank you very much for the Super Chat, buddy. If you take those numbers and you equate that to the whole season, it would have been 4,400 and 49 yards, 24 touchdowns passing, six interceptions, and eight rushing. Thank you, Miss Jackie. I see Richard Norman's got it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I think this offense is going to explode this year. Call me crazy, but I look at Zeke right now. Zeke Elliott looks like a beast. And Zeke Elliott, the Cowboys need to go ahead and play him because here's the thing. Here's the thing that I got to tell you that I absolutely positively love about Zeke Elliott right now. Thomas Garrett, thank you very much for the Super Chat. I absolutely love that Zeke Elliott wants to get paid. I ain't mad about a player wanting to get paid. You take the shots that he takes constantly. I don't want to get paid, too. But he is going about it the right way. Look at Le'Veon Bell. Look at Todd Gurley, who was in the media talking about getting paid and everything else. You know, he was bitching and moaning. You know, you look at Le'Veon Bell, who held out and basically got shipped out. Zeke Elliott, he ain't said a word about his contract to the media. Zeke Elliott 
showed up for voluntary workouts. Let me say that again. Voluntary workouts. Remember what Earl Thomas did last year when he won the contract? He didn't show up until he absolutely positively had to and was pissed off. You didn't get that from Zeke. You're not getting that from Zeke. Zeke is in game shape right now today. Zeke Elliott is out there busting his ass right now. Zeke Elliott has not missed a single game in his career. Zeke Elliott has gotten two out of three rushing championships and would have a third had it not been for the damn NFL suspending him on he said, she said, BS, as opposed to letting all these other guys just kind of walk, okay? Zeke Elliott will be ready to rock and roll in September. Zeke is not Emmett. He's Herschel Walker. I don't know. I, I got to be honest. Emmett Smith, you know, time will tell if Zeke Elliott is Emmett. Because I got to tell you, right now he's looking really good. One thing that Emmett had early in his career throughout was the best offensive line in football. We had that in 2016. We didn't have that in 2017. And we haven't had that in 2018. We might have that in 2019. But he is still produced every single time. So... I'll hold off. I'll hold off judgment on whether or not Zeke Elliott is Emmett Smith. I don't know if he'll be able to have a career as long as Emmett Smith. Oh, Zeke isn't Emmett Smith. Zeke is Zeke. Yeah, Zeke is a different beast all the way around. And a lot of people are saying, you know, look at Todd Gurley. Well, Todd Gurley missed games before last year. Todd Gurley missed a couple his rookie year. Second year, I think he played all 16. His third year, he missed a couple of games. And then, of course, last year. So, Ty Gurley has had some injuries and things in there. Zeke Elliott, he was a little bit nicked up. But Zeke Elliott is still out there every game. Zeke Elliott is faster. And I think he's a little bit, I think he can put a little more punishment than, than, than Smith can, too. Cowboys get it like, oh, okay. Richard Coleman, who are you? Uh, you're somebody I see. Yeah. Uh, understand one thing, guys, there's certain keywords that if you say automatically are going to hold your stuff. So when you go through and use the N word or F you or this, that, and the other, those things are automatically going to do to, to hold it. And then, you know, my great, uh, moderator, Stephanie incognito, miss Jackie and all that, they're going to go ahead and put you in timeout. So understand Let's have real talk about football. You know, you may be a fan of the Eagles, God help you, or the Giants. No, they're not coming out, out yet. But the Redskin ones, a few of those are coming around. And I understand that you're going to say my Cowboys stink and all that. And I'm okay with that. But you know what? Let's have a real discussion about things, okay? You know, if you want to say my quarterback stinks, give me some reasons why Dak Prescott stinks in your mind. Why Dak Prescott is not a good quarterback. Because I would love to have a discussion, a real thing. But let's not have any personal attacks. And let's not just come in here because you're, you know, 12 years old and you want to try and get some attention, okay? So let's do that for me. Um, but I think the Cowboys need to go ahead and pay Zeke Elliott. I think it's just, and they need to do it sooner than later. Because understand this, he's getting $6 million this year, I think 9 or $10 million next year. So that's $16 million. What you do is you go through right now and say it's a four-year extension, a four-year deal. You already get paid him 16. And this is basically what you did with Demarcus Lawrence. Demarcus Lawrence is already getting $20.5 million this year. Basically, all they did was add two more years to it, basically another $41 million. Because then they could walk away. Thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, where's the name? Where's the name? Randy Styles. Or I, I, I butchered that name. Forget it. Uh, sorry about that. I butchered your name, man. But understand that um, you do the deal now, and I think the Cowboys are going to do that. I think what they're going to do is you do Amari Cooper's deal first. And I just say, why are you doing Amari Cooper's? Because Amari Cooper's $14 million. $14 million right now. If you do Amari Cooper, get that out of the way, you can reduce his cap number right now. 
you can grab yourself five or six million dollars for this year. Then it gives you now about twenty-six million. You can do Dax deal and go ahead and you know make the first year where it costs you about eighteen million. So you still have a little bit of money there. You already got six million for this year for for Zeke. You just give him the guaranteed money that gets prorated over the next four years, and you can keep his number friendly as well. But here's the real advantage to it is you're adding those years on. You're only basically adding two more years on now, which means that if at 27 he hits that wall that running backs hit, and I think I missed a super chat in there, another one. Dickie Normus, thank you very much for the super chat. Um, oh, you're the only one allowed to act up in here? No, man, you can't even act up, uh, uh, Richard. Um, then if he hits the wall... You can walk away. And that's the same thing we have. My echo machine sounds very off. Okay, I've got to probably need to play with it a little bit. Um, I'll have to check it out because I haven't been, been using that. Hopefully the regular sound is okay. Is the regular sound okay, Stephanie? Okay, so th there's a couple different settings. I don't want to play with it right now. Um, I don't want to mess up the, the show. Um, so you pay him now. So if he does hit the wall in four years, you're okay. You can let him go. If you wait till after this year and then after his fifth year, franchise tag, as some people say, well, technically, you've already done three years of the four-year deal. You've already done three years of the four-year deal. And the franchise tag is going to be probably about $13 million. It vibrates, it vibrates, okay, it vibrates too much, Stephanie. Um, so if you're already paying him $13 million for a franchise tag in three years, or excuse me, two more years. Oh, that, okay, oh yeah, okay. Sorry, okay, you gotcha. Um, you're already paying him $13 million for the third year, right? You're paying him $9 million right there and $6 million. So right now, 13 and that's 19, 19 and 10, you're already paying them 29. So if you go ahead and do right now a four-year deal that's Todd Gurley-ish, that's only 54. So you're only talking about $20 million, 20 million more than you already have to pay him, and you can walk away. But what you really do is you now have a player who is, like, happy. You know, he's really happy. He's feeling good. You don't have a distraction going into the season. You don't have a Le'Veon Bell situation. You don't have people asking the other players, what do you think about Zeke Elliott? Should he get paid? It's done and it's over with. But unlike Demarcus Lawrence, who said, basically put a gun to the Cowboys head, I'm not getting my body fixed until you pay me, which I think was wrong 100%. Because he could have had that done two months ago and been further along and been ready for the season. Zeke's not doing that, and that alone says you need to take care of that player because that player has been there. That guy has changed the narrative on him where you looked at his rookie year and he was in trouble, you know, he was out there with Booby Gate and hanging out and doing the – hey, Zeke, now he's hanging out with kids that got hit by hockey pucks. Now he's talking and helping kids that had cancer. Now he is – a face of the franchise. I hope he starts getting some of the uh, love from the uh, advertisers and stuff like that, like Dak does, because he has changed it around. He is an all-in team guy right now, and you need to take <coughs> care of that guy. Now, another guy who is a team guy, and I'm curious to see, Dallas Cowboy fan, 1980, how you doing, man? Um, is Jason Witten, and that's where a lot of people are like, well, you brought back... Javier, news, hopefully. I got the, the reverberator not vibrating too much for Stephanie. Appreciate the super chat. Um, and it was almost a curse with, oh, it was almost a curse with Jason Witten where you saw, like, every tight end they brought in, nobody ever succeeded while Jason Witten was there. You know, Mar Marty B. had to leave and go elsewhere and get a ring. But nobody was really able to crack the lineup. 
Now, this was a clip from uh, a little over a year ago. I want to recognize a guy. We talk about him a lot. We talk about him for a reason. 225 consecutive starts in the National Football League. It's hard to do, guys. It's hard to do. To play at the level this guy's played at for the last 15 years, it's something else. So I want Jason Witten to come on down here and recognize him with this. If you do not want to run through a brick wall right after that speech, then you got no heart whatsoever. And that's one of the reasons why you bring back a guy like that. Because what happens is, and happy birthday to Jason Wynn. Thank you, Stephanie, for reminding me of that. What happens is, is guys want to be like him. Guys will follow him, and guys will say, you know what? I want that guy to get a ring. I will do everything I can to try and make that guy go out on top. And that's one of those motivating factors. That is like, go win one for the Gipper. That is one of those ones that, man, we got to do this. And like he said, time goes by fast. Dan Marino, when he was young, went to the Super Bowl. They lost to the Redskins. Oh, I, w wish, I wish Dan Marino had gotten that one. I really wish he had gotten that one. But he figured, that's eh, okay. This is easy. I'll get back. I'll get that ring. But it never happened. And that ring is everything when it comes to football. You can be a Hall of Famer. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. But it'll be one of those things that you will forever wonder, what did I do not to get there? Why didn't I get that? Why wasn't I able to be good enough to do that? And that's where you want to try and see somebody like that go out on top. Kicker missed the field goal. Jason quit. Jason wouldn't quit on the team, but happy birthday. Nate Brown, how did he quit on the team? He retired. He retired. I saw that life of football player dude was a dual boot braces. Okay, I missed that one. Dallas is 3-1 against the Eagles. You know Dak got nothing on Wentz except he doesn't get hurt. But each dog gets his day. Oh, I see the Eagle fans are in the house. Some sour grapes. Okay, you know what? Man, I, you know what? I'm going to leave you alone. I'm going to leave you alone because this is my tear jerker, jer jerker night, okay? Um, Bird gang. Oh, yeah. Bro, you know what? Yeah, and, 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 uh, <laughs> I don't want to. I, 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 you know, every time I'm out. You guys just want to draw me back in. Come on, man. Why, why, why are you going to do this to yourselves, man? 
Why do you want to do this, man? Do you really want to do this, Bird Gang? But Bird Gang, you came into my backyard and talking smack. <laughs> I didn't come to your house, okay? You're coming in my house, you grab my good liquor, you're drinking it, and you're leaving a mess around. I didn't come sit in your backyard. How's that male cheerleader working out for you? Huh? How's that working for you? And and let me and, and you know you say oh wait, wait, you know this is kind of funny because you say that Dak doesn't have anything on Wentz. He just stays healthy. You remember that shootout this year in Dallas where Dak Prescott went for four hundred and wait, wait, wait how much four hundred sixty seven yards. Uh, was, was it 400, four, it, it, somebody correct me, was it 467 yards that Dink and Dunk Dak went for against the Eagles? I don't know, I, I, I don't have the stats in front of me. Has Carson Wentz ever thrown for 467 yards? He may have, I don't know, I, I, like I said, I don't follow, oh, 455, thank you. Thank you, uh, McDonald's BLT. 450, sorry, sorry, I said 467. I'm sorry, it's 367 against the Giants. But has Carson Wentz ever thrown for 455? I just, just let me know. You can look it up for me and let me know if he has. But I believe Dak Prescott kicked your ass right there, didn't he? How many times has Carson Wentz been Dak? I'll wait. <laughs> Let the eagle fans fly. <laughs> but, 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 but come on, Stephanie. They're coming into my house and disrespecting me in my own house. I understand if they're on their own channel. Why they got to come in here? <coughs> or is it, <clears throat> or hey, how you doing, Virginia Finals? Or is it that they're trying to get their digs in now because they realize that their team is about the seventh oldest in the NFL and that they have literally mortgaged their future and they have a ticking time bomb with all these old players and high contracts that it's going to come kicking. Here's what's funny. Everybody's concentrating on the Dallas Cowboys. We got players we got to pay and everything else. And, you know, we only have $87 million of cap space next year right now. The Eagles, on the other hand, they got to pay Carson Wentz. Well, that is if he can stay upright. They got other players they have to, and they're going to have a lot of holes because a lot of those guys are old as crap. Deshaun Jackson is like $40 million. Do you think he's going to be good for the next three years? Do you? Do you, punk? Uh, well, but Willie Nelson, it's not my fault your quarterback can't stay healthy. We lost Tyron Smith, and people say, oh, don't, don't say you lost Tyron Smith. Don't use that first. You, now you're talking about, oh, our quarterback, he can't stay healthy. Well, whose fault is that? It's y'all who drafted the guy. Anyway, let, let, let move it. Move, let's just move it right on. I know you guys are just looking for attention. I know you're looking for attention, okay? But I love it how, you know, you, you know what you're getting to sound like? You're getting to sound like the New York stinking giant fan making excuses why you failed. South of heaven, thank you. Joe, you got one ring in 58 years. Let me know when you get five. A frail and fragile Carson Wentz the entire season. I know, you know, it, it, here's the thing that'll be funny. I, and I can't wait to go to the sports bar and just watch Eagle fans. Every time that Carson Wentz gets hit. Because, see, I'm going to tell you, I know from experience, Eagle fans, what it's like. Because we got to the point with Tony Romo that every time, here's what happened with me with Tony Romo. I love Tony Romo. I wish Tony Romo had won a ring with, Dak, with Des Bryant. I really wish they had. But when Tony Romo got later in his career and he started scrambling around, in my mind, I had three things that could happen. Three. And I was literally on the edge of my seat. One, he's going to make an incredible move and he's going to go down the field and it's going to be a touchdown. 
It's going to be a thing of beauty. It's going to be J.J. Watt tackling air and stuff, and he's rolling out, and he's going to hit Terrence Williams in the end zone. Boom. That's one thing. Second thing, he's going to scramble around, and it's going to be a Tony Ono. It's going to be an interception. Ah, oh, crap. We crapped out. Or three, he was going to get hit and not get back up, and the season was done. That's what happened in the last couple of years in my mind every time Tony Romo was scrambling around. And if you are an Eagle fan right now, you got to start having that feeling with him as well. Is this hit going to be the one that takes him out for the season? And now your next man up is no longer Nick Foles. So you have to be concerned. I, I'm concerned. I mean, don't get don't get me wrong. Anybody can go out on any play. Anybody can. But some guys just kind of get Tony Romo-itis. And it seems like Carson Wentz has got that Tony Romo-itis. Bird gang. Oh, okay. So uh, <laughs> I don't leave the chat, bro. 200 people in here, but only 50 have real football IQ. Okay. If you say so, five to one, uh, there you go, south of heaven. So, anyway, back to Jason Witten and getting this band back together. I would love to have Jason Witten get that ring. And then you've got DeMarcus Ware. DeMarcus Ware um, wanted to come back and coach. And this is actually kind of cool because this is one of those things that once you're a Dallas Cowboy player, you're always a Dallas Cowboy player. You can look at how the Dallas Cowboys hire within. Dallas Cowboys will go through, and you look at some of our coaches' staff. Leon, Leon, Leon Lett is defensive line coach, and unfortunately he was a little bit wrong, though, on Taco because he thought Taco was going to be the breakout player. You know, that didn't quite work out. Um, if I see him there, I'm going I'm to remind him of that. But you look at um, our offensive line coach. Um, God, I'm having a brain fart here. Because I didn't get my coffee. Thanks, Tyson. Um, Marco Colombo, one of our offensive linemen. You look at Jason Garrett was hired from being offensive coordinator. And that's why I think Chris Richard is going to end up being the Dallas Cowboys head coach if and when Jason Garrett goes. I just have that feeling. Having DeMarcus Ware, who can come back and he can bring that hardware, he can go through there and say, look, guys, you see how pretty that is? You want one of these? You want one of these? We're going to put that away. Here's what you got to do. You can't leave a goddamn thing on the field. You got to do everything. You got to stay focused. Forget this going out and partying. You got to get your body right. You got to get your mind right. You got to be a team player. <laughs> Virginia Five. <laughs> you know, I, I you got it. You're right about that. I, I should I should have taken those Jenga blocks, man. Cause those. Oh man, those. I gotta find out where he got those. Um, Bird Gang, listen. Next man up. Next man up. Don't give me this. Oh, against preseason quarterbacks, laugh out loud. Whose fault is that? It's your fault for not being able to get the guys in shape and being able to keep them on the field. Seriously. We've lost Sean Lee how many times? We've lost Tyron Smith. We end up having, now, now, if, if you want to complain about something, complain about the NFL suspending Zeke Elliott. Now, that's an excuse because that's something you got no control over. You have to plan for being injured. you got to say, okay, this guy might get hurt, so what's the next player going to be? So don't give me this crap because if the Cowboys, we pull something like that, you're going to go through and say, oh, you, oh, stop making excuses. We kicked your ass. Man, get the hell out of here with that. Man, Get the hell out. I tell you what, man. You, 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 you getting out, you're getting under my skin now. You are truly getting underneath my skin. And you know what? You don't want to do that because you, you just trust me. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. You really wouldn't like me when I'm angry. So come on, man. Just get out of here with that stuff.
Didn't get it. Sorry, I had a little little brain fart there. What the heck? Hold on one second, guys. I need to check something here. Hang on. Got a little issue here. Hang on. This is where Michael Anthony would be helpful if he was my... <coughs> was my... Uh, guy here but what I have to say to you bird gang is this Oh, you want to see the clock okay here we go but there you go I can back up the camera there you go okay so Eagles fans, sit your ass down, man. Uh, come on, man. This isn't a trash talking site. We're going to try and have some real discussion. And don't worry. I'll get Philly 500 on here, and we'll be able to sit down, and we'll have some real discussions and stuff about the Cowboys versus Eagles and things right now. But this is, come on, this is the off season for my team, okay? Why don't you go play with some of your own kind, okay? All right? Go, go hang out with your cheerleader. Okay? Leave, leave my team alone. Leave them alone. Okay. Zeke, I'm sorry, man. Zeke, I'm sorry, man. I haven't done it. I've been so crazy running around. I've got insect. It's, it's sitting. It's sitting in here. I, I, yeah. forgive me. I suck. It's just the bottom line. I suck. Okay. Um, Willie, well, we do, but listen, I do one about once a week or so with Philly Fowler. I need to call him and see how he's doing. Um, he, he's, he's already got smoking cigars and saying that he, that you guys are the shit after the draft and everything else. So we'll have to wait and see. Cause I think it's a two team race. I'll be honest with you. I know the giants, they're tanking and looking for the future. Um, I don't know what they're doing at quarterback, but Hey, you know what? Because everybody's so down on their quarterback, he'll probably be an all pro. I still don't believe in him. Um, who won the shirt? And actually, Benjamin Forbes did. I haven't heard from him. Send me an email, Benjamin Forbes, so I can get that to you. Benjamin Forbes won the Dak Prescott shirt, so let me know. And everybody did a super chat tonight. We've got you all. Well, I'll get you all in here, and then we'll end up doing another drawing on Friday. Breaking news, Eagles male cheerleader is also their backup quarterback. Oh, oh, damn. That's pretty good. Um you know, th this whole live stream has just kind of got off the rails here. <laughs> Y'all are just having too much fun with this stuff. But l let's let's just leave the l let's ignore the the eagle trolls and maybe they'll go away, or maybe not. I don't know. Um, Zeke is undefeated against the Eagles, twenty one. That's there you go. And uh, Dak has done pretty pretty good with them as well. Um, so I won't. Um, you know, it, 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 just let leave the Eagles on. Glad he won the shirt. And and Virginia Finest, I got to get yours to you, too. Um, Mark, I did my first video. Can you let me know what you think? Um, Willie, well, is, what's the name of your site, Willie? Is, is it actually up? And, and what was the subject on it? Oh, the talk. Okay, so D-Ware. See, here's the thing. D-Ware. Oh, God, I love this. Um, I envy Law Nation. Law Nation got to go with Cowboys experience um, to uh, this Taste of NFL event that they had yesterday. And he was hanging out with, you know, he saw D-Ware, he saw Jason Garrett and everything else. Um, I didn't dislike the video. Oh, well, I, I ended up redoing it. So it, it, I messed up. But I appreciate that, though. You know, I'm always on the go trying to get stuff done, and it's just... It's hard to get everything done, uh, and I apologize because sometimes it's just like, um, you know, I'm I'm trying to get this stuff done, trying to keep the wife happy, trying to work, keep the lights on, you know, figure out what's going on with the Cowboys. It's really crazy sometimes. I mean, guys, I go to bed at night and I'm still going through and I'm looking at what's going on. Um, thank God for Miss Jackie because Miss Jackie is constantly sending me stuff and information and updates and things, so she's making my life better. You know, I got to put her on the payroll. Um, but D-Ware wants to come back 
and coach officially with the team. He wants a real title. And he's worked with the team a little bit before, much the same way as Charles Haley does. Charles Haley comes in, and you'll remember last year, I think it was last year, he questioned Taco's football IQ and his desire. And you also remember, too, see, this is the thing I love about my homeboy, Charles. What do you say? He's a who? Who's Charles Haley? Charles Haley like, who? Who's Charles Haley? is, he keeps it real. And he was pointing on about Jerry Jones built a house for losers. Because before last year, our record at home was basically about 500. It's a great place to go watch a game. I ain't going to lie to you. You're in awe. When you go see the club sections and stuff and the, 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 the rooms, I mean the, the dual ones they have on each side of the place, you're in there having a ball, being seen with people. You're up on the party decks. Hey, what's going on? Send him out. Let me take a picture. Up, oh, got the TV screen behind me and stuff. You know? You see, used to see the dancers and the cages and everything else and all that. You know, all the artwork that's around there. And the problem is, is there was so much stuff that's going on you almost forgot there's a game going on in the field. And the price is so high to get down there, to get those crazy fans like me and Michael Anthony. You know, we can't afford the seats that's up, up at the top where nobody hears you. So it's like when you go to FedEx Field, that piece of crap, rusting girders, the cave seats and all that stuff, there ain't nothing to do there but watch football. You go to Philadelphia with those asses, again, ain't nothing to do there but watch football. Oakland, all those places, the people are going, and they have a home field advantage. And the Cowboys, Hazel Brooks, thank you very much for the super chat. The Cowboys didn't have that home field advantage. Until this year, I'll tell you, this year was the first year that that place was rocking for me in the years that I've been going. But Charles Haley keeps it real. Charles Haley will tell you in a minute if you ain't about shit. And the thing I can tell you about Charles Haley is if you're not with Charles Haley, you're against Charles Haley. And he's going to kick your ass. Kind of a funny sense of humor. A little bit crazy, a little bit off. But he is about winning. And Charles Haley comes through, and he works a couple days at training camp. He'll come through and work with the team from time to time. And you've had DeMarcus Ware do that a little bit too, and he did that with Denver. But he wants to get into coaching, and that's where he feels like there's something special about this team. He can feel it. Jason Witten can feel it. Sean Lee can feel it. We, we can, I can feel it. I don't know if they're going to win a Super Bowl. But I got to tell you, you have to feel good about these guys. You know, we, we talked about how bad the offensive line was last year. I think the offensive line is going to be in hell of a better shape this year. You know, we talked about how the Cowboys offense didn't score last year. I'm sitting here looking at a Randall Cobb and um, Amari Cooper, a healthy Zeke Elliott. Now you got a security bl blanket with Jason Witten who is thinking about his own mortality. I'm thinking that this <laughs> offense is actually going to be pretty good. It's still going to be a ball control offense, but... Here's what's interesting that Michael Irvin said. Michael Irvin said, I have concerns about Kellen Moore as the offensive coordinator. I'm kind of worried that he's not the guy. Until he talked to Zeke. And the way Zeke believes in him, trusts him, Michael Irvin's gotten on board with him. And I think, in a, you know, we can look at Kellen Moore as Scott Linehan's quarterback coach. But when you've been under somebody else's shadow, what you try and do is you try and make your own mark. You, you learned a lot from him. Maybe you learned what not to do. But when you become from the student to the teacher, you are now trying to make your own path. And that's what I think Kellen Moore, who's got more talent right now than Scott Linehan ever did. I think you're going to see the team open up a lot more. And I think once they start opening up, it's going to open up everything for the whole offense. <coughs> so I'm excited. I think 
The former Cowboy players are excited. Most of all, the current Cowboy players are excited as hell and ready to go. They're chomping at the bit. And there's nothing that is going to be a wedge in between them. Not getting paid for Demarcus Lawrence, waiting on his shoulder, not Zeke Elliott and his money, not the quarterback getting paid. None of that stuff is going to be an issue. These guys care about winning. And if you've got that and you got guys that can mentor them like a Sean Lee, like a Jason Witten, you've got something really good to work with. And I feel something special. And I hope I'm not wrong, but I really do feel something special. There's going to be hard times. There's going to be some times where you're going to question, was this the right thing? Um, but I feel great. Hazel. Oh, it's Hazel, please. I'm, it, Hazel, understand, I'm a name butcher, man. I'm sorry. I, I really suck, and I'm trying to do better. There, You know, there's certain words that my wife will say to me, that, that I'll say, and my wife says, you can never, ever use that word again. And so that, I'm not even sure what I did wrong, because it's like frustrated. My wife is like, don't use it. You are banned from using that because you cannot say the damn thing right. And she'll go through and I'll say it with her many, 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 many times. And she's just like, forget it. It's not part of your vocabulary anymore. So understand, it's not, I, I just suck. And, you know, I'm sitting here with a computer in each hand, three mouses, uh, controls for the show for the different cameras and everything else so I could put the feeds in and the lights and, and I'm reading all this stuff and I'm trying to keep my mental faculties and and then Tamira you know I didn't get my coffee it's, it's cold coffee didn't even get a chance to put a little clue in it so I'm, I'm just off my game my has you pay oh Joseph man you know that, that's I hate doing work around the house my wife is the hardest She's the hardest client I have because it's never good enough. Joseph, uh, you miss. Uh, I, it's just too much. I'm sorry, Joseph. This is just a lot. A lot going on. We got um, Demarcus Ware wanting to come back and coach for the team. You got Des Bryant, who's out on the field running around for the first time since um, rupturing his Achilles tendon and wanting to come back. You got Jason Witten, and we had the tear, joke, tear jerking moment with him thinking about how fast time flies. We had the Eagles guys in here trying to talk some trash and I had to talk about their male cheerleader. At the you tattooed on your booty. And apparently we've got somebody tattooed on their booty as well. So do it all over. I would love to do it all over, <coughs> Joseph, but I didn't have my coffee. But let me thank Incognito, South of Heaven, Miss Jackie. Um, God, Stephanie, Stephanie, uh, for being great moderators and everything else. Thank you, Eagle fans, for coming in for some comic relief and stuff. Thank you for everybody else who came in, part of the chat, and um, everybody who did Super Chats and all that stuff. Thank you all for all the support. Um, hopefully, I didn't mess up too much tonight. I think I've got some of the bugs taken care of. I found it out that... Um, because I got so much stuff running on the laptop, I got to have a fan running for it, you know, one of those laptop fans, because it heats up, and once it heats up, it, the CPUs go down, and the CPUs go down, and things start shutting off. So I'm learning, but by the time the season gets here, guys, I'm going to have this thing down pat. So thank everybody for all you do, but right now it's time to turn down the lights. Turn down the lights. Come on. Come on. <laughs> this party's over. The, lights, the party's over. <laughs> they say that all good things must end. Call it a night. The party's over. And tomorrow and next year, start the same old thing again. Yeah.